Hi, and welcome to the last part of the seminar Data Science for Economics. And the last part is dedicated to generalized random forest. But before we go into the deep details of how generalized random forest actually works, we are going to see a, a practical application of this method to the National Study of Learning Mindsets data. So this data comes from a large RCT experiment, which consists of a short online program designed to foster a growth mindset during the transition to high school. So this RCT was done in the US and it included a low cost nudge like interventions for students in their ninth grade that where some students would see messages like hard work can make you more intelligent, which is assumed to, to put the student into a learning mindset as opposed to a fixed mindset where a person may think that abilities are fixed from birth. So the primary purpose of this experiment was to find whether this can change and improve the attitudes of students and their professional performance after they graduate. And in particular, this experiment was looking at the heterogeneity in treatment effects. Who is susceptible to this growth mindset? The variables that the researchers used was some continuous measure of achievement, Y, W, binary treatment, S3 is a student self-reported expectations for success in the future, and then some characteristics about the student, like race, gender, some characteristics about uh, school, whether the school is rural, suburban, and so on, the share of students with fixed mindset in that school, achievement level at the school level, racial ethnic composition, poverty concentration, and so on. So the questions of the research was the mindset intervention effective in improving student achievement, and then testing hypothesis, whether the effect is moderated by school level pre-existing mindset norms like X1 or achievement X2, and exploring possible role of other variables in moderating treatment effects. But the problem of exploring other variables in moderating treatment effects is that those variables were not pre-registered pre in the pre-analysis plan and so may create questions of multiple hypothesis testing. So challenges that there are for any research is multiple hypothesis testing outside a pre-analysis plan. Although originally this was an RCT, the data that is available for researchers is synthetic data, which led to a violation of orthogonality condition between the treatment and school characteristics, meaning that now the treatment effect is not really random in the data set that they have. Then there's also clustering at school level problem, which might be specific challenge for the generalized random forest. Gen generalized random forest is a model that uses random forest machinery, which we see for prediction tasks, in order to estimate treatment effects non-parametrically. And its main purpose is to capture heterogeneity in treatment effects in a data-driven manner. Using generalized random forest, which was developed by AC, Tupchip Shirani and Weger, AC and Weger find that treatment had a large positive effect on average, but there is no evidence of strong heterogeneity in treatment effects. There is some evidence that the first variable, the school level mean of students' fixed mindsets, actually mediates the treatment effect, but there is no evidence that the second pre-registered variable, school achievement level, mediates the effect. And all of this is achieved with just a few lines of code in R using GRF package. So let me first briefly recap random forests, starting with decision trees. Decision tree is a model that partitions the predictor space in a way that minimizes residual sum of squares within each terminal node, and it uses recursive binary splitting to do so. The final step of each prediction tree is to estimate the prediction is in each node by simply taking the average of the target variable in each final node. Random forests randomly draw subsamples of the training data and for each subsample at each split it considers only some randomly chosen predictors. And then the final prediction of the random forest is an average across all the different predictions by different trees. It would be amazing to have a random forest for causal inference, isn't it? So that we have our covariate space and then we run our data through a decision tree and that it gives us this kind of partitions where it says, okay, in this region, for people with these characteristics, the treatment effect is very low. Here, people have negative treatment effect. Here, the treatment effect is also low, but here, 
This is the region where the treatment effect is the highest. And all of this done automatically. We could have done it if we had been able to observe the counterfactuals directly. So in order to train this decision tree, we should know for sure what is the treatment effect for each individual person in our dataset. But of course, due to the fact that we do not observe counterfactuals, we do not know the treatment effect for each individual person. Hence, we cannot use a random forest to partition the covariate space when we are interested in treatment effects. The naive approach would be to train random forest to create two predictions for the treated and the prediction of random forest for the control. This is wrong. And even if you have an RCT, we can show that this estimator will be biased. So even if you have perfectly an RCT and you don't have confounders between your treatment and your, the outcome variable, it still will be biased. Why? Because we use the same data to decide how to partition into leaves and to estimate mean values within each leaf. So we are having this problem, the bias from overfitting. So in general, again, prediction tools are not the same as causal inference tools. What do we want in the end? We want to have a causal tree that would capture heterogeneity in treatment effects. So meaning that it will partition exactly where treatment effects are most different, but in a way that it provides us with unbiased estimators that in expectation, the estimated treatment effect is the true treatment effect in that region. But we're also interested in standard errors to be small. So we want to avoid very small segments with too few observations, which would cause our standard deviations to blow up. We want our estimators to be as precise as possible.